Hello internet, hello party people, and hello Power World fans. I'm still working on going through my full strategy guide for all the levels of Power World, and I've been enjoying playing the game so much that I haven't really consumed much media about it, so there's a lot of little tips and tricks that I missed, and right now I'm currently compiling all the tips and tricks I can find and all of the ones that I can think of as well into one big video. Hopefully it will be one of the most comprehensive Power World tips and tricks videos on YouTube because everyone I watch it's like you're missing a number of things that I thought should be in there or there's some things that you're doing slightly wrong and hey maybe there's still things that I'm doing kind of wrong even after I've watched this much content about it and played for this many weeks in a row but uh that's the cool part about having a community they can tell you what's up but in this video we're actually going to be talking about the recent patch there's actually been another patch since this one a quick follow-up patch that didn't do a whole lot um, so I'm not really going to talk about that one, but I want to talk about everything in the patch notes here. Um, I want to talk about some things that aren't in the patch notes I've noticed myself. And I also want to talk uh, quickly, and I think I'll start with this, um, about other Power World resources that you can use that can, you know, a little bit quicker reference than videos sometimes. So the first of these resources... This is powerworld.gg. This is their breeding calculator. Now they have a bunch of things here. So there's a database on pals, there's a map, there's item structure, a tier list, tech, tech tree. You know, basically this is, this really kind of feels like the, uh, the word of calc of Power World. And it took me a while to find it, and I've used other types of breeding calculators, but like this is the main thing that I want to point out here. Um, if you were wondering how I came... Where is that? I didn't even see that at. Um, if you're wondering how I came to some of the conclusions or breeding pairs I did in my guides, it's stuff like this, and you can do this determined by the first parent. Do I have to drag them? Never actually used this one. Oh, okay, you can just click on it. Then I get, oh. Second parrot? Okay, cool. Um, so this is the first one I've seen that will actually tell me what breeding two will do. Uh, usually you kind of have to work the other way around. You have to pick at least the first parent and then like look for the second one that you're gonna breed, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but this also has like breeding trees and ways to find the combinations. Oh. So then how do I make my Anubis? Well, maybe I've got an Incineram and an Alphydrin. So I've got that. Well, if I'm trying to breed an Incineram, then this probably isn't the most logical way to... But this actually helps you make a breeding tree. I've never seen anything that did this, so that's really cool. I definitely appreciate that. So this is a lot of... This is also another thing that a lot of breeding guides do. Oh, cool. Okay, so this... Usually this information, this part of this breeding guide right here is all that a lot of other breeding guides that I've seen. I've never seen something that had a breeding tree, and the breeding calculator um, is kind of new as well. So that just beats all of the resources that I've been using for the last couple of weeks into the ground. <laughs> the next, I'm going to show you some Reddits, some Reddit posts. I'll have links to these in the description, but here is a passive skills table slash cheat sheet. This is really important because you, you may have actually noticed that you can look this up in game, but knowing what all of these things do, knowing which ones are possible and what to look for, um, and also like knowing which are the most powerful, etc. These are things that are stuff you're going to want to know, especially for breeding, because you want to be looking at Trying to get some of these tier three effects onto the um, the uh, onto the pals that will actually benefit from them. So you know if you're I'm 
not really using it in your party you know things like vanguard stronghold strategist even though you would think that you would want that in your base motivational leader those kinds of things don't really help you i as i understand those have to be in your party to help and then um you know uh, conversely like defensive abilities aren't really going to be helpful for your base pals as much i mean maybe not these types though um anyways there are a lot a lot of interesting things here as i suspected legend is automatically present on legendary pals um so that's how i gotta go to get that one i haven't actually been to the very end of the game yet because i've restarted and tried different strategies working in um So I haven't really gotten to that one yet, but it's it's interesting to know it's there and that, you know, maybe there's one more breed in my future for a lot of my uh, perfected pals. Also, Work Slave is way more powerful than you would think it is, but it comes with a bit of a drawback. The second Reddit post that I want to show you... Oh, actually... This is the spreadsheet that I thought it was. Okay. So this is the spreadsheet I'd been using as a breeding calculator. Okay, so if you want to use this spreadsheet, I highly recommend that you make a copy of it like it says to do on its front page. I actually have my own personal copy of it. So this is a list of what all of the partner skill upgrades do. How much they get powered up is uniform across all of the mounts, it seems. So for the mounts that do get speed power-ups from this, because some mounts don't, um, but these mounts do, you're going to see a 10% speed increase at level 2, so it's highly 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 desirable and advisable to find five of these things and fuse four of them into the best one just to get that speed boost because level three you get you, you start getting really diminishing turns it, it only goes up two percent the next level three percent the level after that and five percent after that the biggest boost by far is that first four uh to get you to partner skill level two because level one is just the base speed you can also boost your attack power. Uh, this is something that some people know already about this game. It's kind of gotten out there that a lot of these pals will actually boost your attack power. And there's other ones that do it in a different way, but all of these do it while swapping your damage type. So for all of these at level one, you will be doing 50% additional damage your 50% uh, player attack increase. So these, so, you know, using these as your partner while you were using these, while you have this active, you're gonna have 50% additional attack and it's gonna swap your element to an element of your choice. There are actually two, three, three here for dark, two for fire. Um, there's not necessarily one for every element. I don't see one that's necessarily for grass or ice, unfortunate. Um, but there are a number of these and they do make you quite powerful. It is worth pointing out that Frostillion, Frostallion, um, has the ability to in change your damage type to ice, which is different, but it doesn't have an attack increase associated. Now, we'll see why that is when we get to Frostallion, but uh, for this one, there's an element swap for non-mounted pals, because all the other ones you had to be sitting on to get that boost. The attack bonus is a lot lower than your mounted pals, and one of the reasons that you get such a big bonus for the mounted pals, that 50% bonus, is because, you know, being able to fight from on top of your mount 
is difficult. It's something that is going to take a little bit of time and practice to get right, but I think it's kind of meant to be the in-game position for you because that's what we see in towers, right? That's supposed to be like the ultimate strength that one can have with their pal is to basically just ride it around and, and be its better head, I guess. Um, you can also get a element swap to grasp with Verdash, um, but it's not going to increase your attack. It's going to increase your movement speed, actually, which is pretty helpful and pretty cool of Verdash. But the other three that get this are going to be Nox, Wixen, and Anubis. At level 1, which is the base level, you're going to be getting 5% additional attack. And that's going to go slowly, 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 all the way up to 10 additional attack. 10% uh, additional attack at level 5. But again, you can do this while unmounted, and that's probably an easier playstyle for most people, so it works. Now, a lot of people have heard that Kativa can increase your carry weight, and in terms of early game pals, this is a very good point and very useful. But what most people don't know is there's a ton of pals that can do this, and Kativa is very easily the weakest of those. Lunaris, I was actually surprised to be the second weakest, but that scales all the way up to Bronze Cherry, Bronze Cherry Aqua, King Paka, and King, um, sorry, Ice King Paka, which feels like it should be King Paka Crist, but whatever. Um, those all start at 140 and go, I'm sorry, they all start at 100 and go all the way up to 140 units of weight that they can increase yours by. Now, all of these stack, so if you had five of these in your party, you could carry 700 additional weight. And then the king of this is Wumpo and Wumpo Botan. Both of these can increase your carry weight by 160. So five Wumpos or five Wumpo Botans or some combination of those two things would increase your carry capacity by 800, which is pretty nuts. And then, well, I'm not going to read all of these. Because there's, there's a lot. There are a lot of different partner skills. A lot of different pals. As you can see, this is a big guide. And I could do a video about this all by itself. And this is not that video. So, uh, Both of the links to those are going to be right there in the description. So with all of that being said, let's talk about the patch notes. And let's okay. Patch notes in full for one or zero point one point five point zero. Major fixes: implementation of backup of save world data on the world selection screen. You can go back a couple days if you have managed to get yourself into a really glitchy situation that you need to get out of. I've got myself stuck in the small settlement on Xbox a number of times. Um, and it's been really, really painful to get out. A lot of crashing, a lot of crashing. Um, so I think that's a pretty helpful deal. And like, this is also a really good thing to have in any type of a beta game like this. Like, if I'm playtesting something in this way and it's bound to be very glitchy, the ability to reset to a previous save data is very important. Also, apparently this is a major fix, but it, they resolve the issue of unnecessary data accumulating in your save data. Um, I'm not sure how big of a deal this is, but this could cause a lot of problems, potentially. So, you know, maybe this actually resolves some glitches. Maybe this really is a major fix. There is also a keyboard key configuration. Uh, guild members can be removed when they're not logged in, so that you can kind of free up space in your guild. There is a long press change. This is really important for people. That allows people to work continuously by just pressing the work button once. You switch that in the main option settings on the main screen. You can no longer ride or fly in the sanctuaries uh, without getting a wanted level, which is how the game was supposed to work. It was a bit of a glitch that you couldn't. A uh, bit strange. I, I thought it was sight-based, so I figured they just didn't see me flying up there. But uh, I guess if I had flown right in front of them, it wouldn't have mattered either. Or if I would tried to catch the pals. But uh, no longer the case. 
improved interaction accuracy with adjacent objects so that issue that you would have when you were standing in front of something and you would hit the thing next to it often that's kind of annoying it still sort of happens because it's really conditional on what you're pointed towards but um it's it's still a lot better than it was when pals are instructed to attack aggressively they will body everything around them which is i think how everybody expected that to work and it didn't so it was kind of strange um because even with attack aggressively they wouldn't do that until they or you had been attacked usually corrected an issue that allowed pals of rank one or higher to be selected as concentrated material higher ranked pals yield more points when concentrated and it's a bit more than that actually there are diminishing returns on this but if you want to save space in your box one way of doing it now is to take the better of your versions of that pal and concentrate four pals into them putting them all at one star each of these is going to be worth five uh, when you fuse them into something else. So you want to fuse them into something that's at least one star. You're going to be losing one pal that way because, you know, it's not going to bump them up five. It's only going to be able to bump them up four because that's what the first threshold is. If you were to upgrade someone to two stars, you would only get 17 pals worth out of them because the trick here is and what causes diminishing returns at higher stars is it's based on that pal plus the amount that were fused into it last in the last step so for step two when you fuse 16 in instead of getting a full 21 because you fuse 20 pals into it so far you only fuse 16 on the last step so it's 16 plus 1 is 17. so really you should stop at one star if you're just trying to consolidate uh, inventory space and that's going to make it a lot faster to fuse them into something later. There was a bug where large amounts of experience points could be gained at the same time and it would increase uh, the pals level to 50 all at once and that would cause it not to learn any of its active skills which is really unfortunate and I think like Pokemon actually had a similar glitch for a while which is uh, troubling um, to say the least. Although it wasn't as possible to like increase your level that rapidly in Pokemon, but it was still a problem. Mitigated an issue where Mousanda's partner skill, Grenadier Panda, uh, using it on a dungeon boss would cause the boss to get stuck in walls. Fix an issue where a base would get stuck on top of a logging site, etc. And boy, I had uh, a number of pals that got stuck on top of my condenser pretty often. Like, I'm not even sure why they were up there. Just they get stuck on top of a lot of things and that happens a lot less now. Awesome. Added measures that prevent the issue where base pals would wander around and get stuck at the border of your base area. Yep, this happened a lot too and it happens a lot less now. Still happens in some circumstances but it doesn't happen if there's not like an obstacle in the way anymore they could just get stuck outside the barrier as if that was its own obstacle added measures to prevent the issue of base spells getting stuck in the farm on a roof okay very cool because i did have a lot of things getting stuck on my roofs as well Fix an issue where pals would get stuck in the summon space of a pal box when we starting the server on a dedicated server. I had this happen so much more often on Xbox, but I have seen it happen on PC a couple times too. This was a thing that I advised you to just restart the game if it happens. We usually fix it. Well, now you don't have to do that anymore. It's been fixed. Cool. Glitch over, hopefully. Adjusted the default work priority of base pals. So, my understanding here is that now, with the exception of Anubis, um, and there are, there are some other exceptions to this, they will no longer prioritize handiwork. If you ever noticed, if you're working on an assembly line, like, every pal on your base with handiwork would flock to you and just drop what they were doing and come to you. Now... I think, um, I haven't heard like a super detailed discussion of how this actually works, but what I would imagine is they go based on what is their highest uh, work skill. So if someone is like handiwork one but gathering two and there's stuff to be gathered on the farm, then 
instead of helping me with my new work task, they're going to be gathering stuff until there's no more stuff to gather, at which point I guess they'll do handiwork skill uh, tasks. This is really helpful if it does indeed work this way, and I'm pretty sure it does. Um, this is very helpful for pals that have multiple work types because it used to be that they could get easily distracted by one of those, maybe even one of the secondary work types that they weren't specifically all that good at and they wouldn't do the things that they were best at. You would have to find a pal that had specifically only that skill so it would be the only thing that they did and they wouldn't get distracted by other things. And there is still a little bit of virtue to that, but I really think that the best pals for your base because the drawback to that is if there's none of that to do because that's all they've been doing they'll just sit and wait and uh, I don't like my pals necessarily sitting around I like them to be able to do multiple things so they can shift in and out of multiple jobs um, take breaks as they want hang out in my hot tub speaking of hot tubs though the uh, the the high quality hot spring which previously only had the sandy recovery factor of the regular hot spring um, now that actually in, uh, increases their sanity by a higher value, so it is finally worth it to have those on your base. I just thought they looked pretty. <laughs> Significantly relaxed building restrictions for stairs and triangular roofs. If you ever noticed, those are basically the parts of your build that you would have to do last. Um, it is... Wait, triangular roofs? You mean walls, right? There are not triangular roofs. Are you are you crazy? Or are you talking about other roofs? Because, you know, roofs actually function the same way as stairs. Roofs and stairs are basically interchangeable, but neither are triangular. IGN, what are you doing? Couldn't you just directly copy paste the, the patch notes to this? Uh, fix an issue where sound would play an infinite loop when pals at the base use certain active skills. I've only witnessed this a couple times, but it is pretty annoying. Specifications changed so that all changes in environmental temperature are added up. So if you put four campfires next to each other, the surrounding area will have the temperature of a volcano. Previously, the single targets of this did not stack. So famously, you could put a hundred campfires next to each other and you would only have the temperature increase of one campfire because you would need four different types of heat source to increase the temperature to that of a volcano. Now you can just do it with four campfires. This also increases the ability to do the kind of non-aggro um, campfire attack on a pal, especially if you're lower level and it's a grass or ice pal that is weak to campfires <laughs> and being set on fire, especially. And finally, there's a relax mode on the monitoring stand. Previously, it was only useful for making your pals work super hard and go crazy. Um, I guess there's ways to mitigate that. I, there's probably like a total build for being able to put your pals on an increased work speed without making them all insane. Um, but now there's a relaxed working style that basically doesn't reduce their sanity at all. If that's what you're into and just want them to chill. Obviously, this is going to mean they get less work done. So, also, there is a bit of a glitch with this update where if you do have a monitoring stand already, it may have just been reset to relax. So if you feel like your pals are just chilling since this update, that's why I go change it to the default. Uh, delete it, do whatever you gotta do. Okay, so balance adjustment. Significantly strengthened mining power for Dig Toys' partner skill. But, and also I think on base, <laughs> Previously, it would just ping things for one, and while it did that very quickly, um, it just wasn't a very quick way of doing damage to stuff. It was supposed to be a very fast digger, and it could be in the field. Like, if you threw it at things as you were going about your day in the field, yes, it did a lot of damage to ore and could just really wipe it out quickly. Well, now it'll do the same on your base and uh, also through its partner skill. 
The abnormally high selling price of nails has been fixed and unfortunately this is a bit of a problem for my guides. I'll make a quicker video talking about this but because nails don't sell for high prices anymore I would really advise people um, well there's a number of things that you can actually create uh, food wise that sell for pretty high prices. I really like salad on my base anyways. Um, so I guess you could sell your extra salads. Pizza also has a pretty good selling price. And while baked berries don't have a high selling price, you can make so many of them and use them to power level your pals that these are an easy item to sell as well. But if you want kind of a passive income, then getting a higher level Sibilex will cause uh, them to drop high quality cloth at a rapid rate onto your ranch. These sell for twice the current price of nails. So while nails do still kind of make you some money, if you got some stacks of nails, far more than you need laying around, you should still sell them, but they're not nearly what they used to be. High quality cloth is gonna be even better and that one you can just kind of passively farm with Sibilex. So while this was a more passive and slower way of making income previously that I recommended, it's certainly a lot better now. Significantly increase the number of police officers who appear when a crime is committed. So uh, don't be beating up merchants <laughs> and trying to capture them. No, actually this is pretty cool, but it's gonna be a lot more dangerous to do it now. There is now an electric shock effect for the Free Pow Alliance's crossbow, which is pretty cool because I don't know how like the Syndicate thugs got a Gatling gun, but the best thing that, that the Free Pow Alliance can find is a regular crossbow. Um, so now it has a stun effect, so that's pretty cool. It does the similar stun effect to what the stun baton will do. And also it can hit you in the air. I've uh, That's actually how I found out about this. I was flying over some Free Pow Alliance folks and I got stunned in the air. Kinda sucked. Adjusted the flight distance for the sphere launcher and scatter sphere launcher. These guys were almost unusable because they had less range than you did just throwing the damn thing. At least it seemed that way. They were pretty useless. Increase the sand recovery amount of high quality hot springs. Yep, because previously it was the same as the regular hot spring. And then the server lobby has been renovated. Search by server name now works. You, they added the ability to view online players on dedicated server. On community servers though, this will only be displayed if the setting is enabled. And then other random things, there is now day five memo. That's, that's there. <laughs> it's not missing anymore. You can adjust the in-game brightening and settings. Many minor bug fixes corrected various incorrect texts and did some anti-cheat stuff. The other things that I want to point out, so because of the way that handiwork and that kind of stuff was adjusted, as they were adjusting this, um, they also adjust the way that stone and logging farms work. So your pals will now attempt to mine actual resources before they go to the mine. They will chop down real trees before they go to the logging farm. My issue with both of these things previously was that they would cause my pals to ignore natural deposits that existed on my base. And that meant, well, it meant that like on my mountaintop base, I couldn't farm stone because I couldn't put a stone farm up because if I put a stone farm up, then I would only farm stone. I would not be able to farm the coal or the ore. But now, since I'm running into an issue where, especially since I built over part of that base's ground and there's fewer spawn points, and also I have more Anubises, then my team can deal with all the ore deposits rather quickly and it would be nice to have something else for them to work on once that's done and having a stone farm on the base would be very helpful now in a way that it just didn't work before. And that's basically all the notes that I could find for the newest patch. Um, things that were listed in here, things that weren't listed in here and some nuance and detail about all of them. 
Also, really hope that you appreciate all of those extra resources for people who like to do it yourself. That's really going to help your experience of Power World out. And for everyone who's been here for the last 30 minutes, thank you so much for listening. And be sure to like and subscribe. There's going to be more content. It's not all Power World, but I will certainly do more Power World in the future. The community does seem to be dropping off a bit. The views on YouTube seem to be dropping off a bit, um, even for other channels, as I've noticed. Which is unfortunate, but, you know, whether this community stays or not, I'm probably going to continue playing this game. I think it's fun. I'm also kind of holding out for a day when more people will join it because it's less glitchy, especially on the Xbox. I think getting this on Xbox will enable a lot of more casual gamers to, to play. Um, and I think that's really an audience that's going to love this game. But, you know, I kind of understand if you're not playing the Xbox version right now. I still actually haven't tested it since the patch on Xbox because... I have a YouTube channel to run, and I had neglected that for a little bit, and I got work to do, so not a ton of time to play Power World, but I have tried out the new patch and a lot of these things on the PC, and they all seem to be working great, and everything seems to be working better. I've been having fun with dungeons and all that kind of stuff. Everything is just a little bit better than it used to be, and isn't that the best review after a patch happens? Anyways... Thank you, and I appreciate you listening, and with all that being said, I'll see you in the next one.